In this video, we'll take a look at year-to-date analysis and the period it covers, the difference between year-to-date and year-over-year -year analysis, and how to sum a dynamic range with index match and X lookup. If this sounds interesting, keep watching. And don't forget to leave a comment. A year-to-date or YTD analysis is a type of financial analysis used to analyze and track a company's performance over time. It's typically used in the review of an income statement, and it refers to the cumulative balance from the beginning of the current year to the current date. Year-to-date balances can be compared with the same period from the prior year, and it could be a monthly, quarterly, or annual comparison. So, what period does it cover? Year-to-date covers the period beginning from the current year to the current date, and it can apply to either calendar or fiscal years. A fiscal year generally refers to a 12-month period for financial reporting purposes, and not all fiscal years correspond with the calendar year. So, if the fiscal year starts in April, year-to-date will be April of this year to the current date. And if it starts in January, year-to-date will be January of this year to the current date. Month-to-date covers the period beginning from the current month to the current date, while quarter-to-date covers the period beginning from the current quarter to the current date. So what is the difference between YTD and year-over-year -year analysis? Both analyses compare performance with the same period in the previous year, and most companies compare YTD and year-over-year -year on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. Now, the major difference is that YTD covers results from the beginning of the calendar of fiscal year to the current date, while year-over-year -year compares results from a specific period to the same period in the previous year. For example, if a company's revenue was $1 million in May 2020, and 1.1 million in May 2021, you would say revenue increased by 10% year over year. You can check out the link to my video on year over year analysis in the box below. Now, let's take a look at how to use index match and X lookup in the presentation of year to date analysis. This is a company's month to date and year to date result. And this report is updated monthly with the values from the 2020 and 2021 income statements here on separate sheet. The month to date covers the period from the beginning of April to the end of April, and year to date covers the period beginning from January to the end of April. Now to update the report at the end of the following month, all you have to do is make a selection from the drop down and it updates automatically. Now, let me show you how to write the formula. Here's an income statement for a four month period, January to April. If the current month is February, the year to date revenue will be the sum of B4 to C4. At the end of March, the formula has to be updated to the correct range. That's B4 to D4. Enter. This is not efficient, so let's fix it. First step, take a look at the range. Press F2 for edit mode. The range is from B4 to D4. B4 is the start point and D4 is the end point. And the colon tells Excel to include all cells between the start and end point. You can press Shift and F3 to confirm. Or highlight the formula and press F9. Press escape to exit that. Now all you need is the index function to return the reference to B4 and D4. The index function is a versatile function and one of its many uses is that it can return the reference to a cell. And when combined with the match or X match functions, it becomes super dynamic. You can check out my video on index match and X lookup in the box below. Now let's see how it works. The index function returns the value at a given position. So type index. Array can be one or multiple columns. The start point is the first month. So B4 to B16. 
The next argument is the row number. This is where we need a match function. The match function returns the position of an item in a range of cells. The lookup value is revenue. Lookup array is A4 to A16. Select zero for an exact match. Close the bracket for match. The array has only one column, so we can skip the column number argument. Close the bracket. Good. We have the value for the first month. Let's move to the end point. Index. The array will be multiple columns this time because the end point could be any month. So select the entire range. Match will supply the row number. The lookup value is revenue. Lookup array is A4 to A16. Zero for an exact match. Close the bracket for match. We have to impute the column number here because the array has multiple columns. So we use match again. The lookup value is the month. Lookup array is B3 to D3. Select zero for an exact match. Close the bracket and enter. Good. Now these functions can be nested in the sum function. First, activate the clipboard so you can see what you copy. Go to the home tab and click on clipboard. Now copy the formulas. Replace B4 with the formula for the start point. Replace D4 with the formula for the last month and press enter. Let's check if it works. Great. If you use Microsoft 365, then XLOOKUP is a better option. XLOOKUP is very flexible. It can do a vertical or horizontal search and return the value based on selected criteria. Let's try it. XLOOKUP. The lookup value is revenue. The lookup array is A4 to A16. Now, the return array is the start point, B4 to B16. We don't need the optional arguments here, so close the bracket. Cool. We have the value for the first month. Now, let's move to the end point, X lookup. The lookup value is revenue. The lookup array is A4 to A16. Now, the return array are the values in the month. And to make this part dynamic, so the value changes based on the selected month, you need another XLOOKUP function to return the value from whichever month is selected. This is known as a nested XLOOKUP. The lookup value is March. The lookup array is B3 to E3. Now, the return array will be the entire range. Close the bracket and close again. Let's check if it works. You can go ahead and replace B4 with the formula for the start point and D4 with the formula for the end point. That's it. Let's go back to the year-to-date analysis. The report was prepared using index and match and conditional formatting was used to add these icons. You can download the file in the description box below. Now, at a glance, Management can see how each item tracks against the previous period, and this will help management take corrective actions. That's all for today. If you'd like to see more videos on financial analysis, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.